Hey Luke here with catsandcarp.com. Me and my boy Tom here, we're gonna show you how to catch carp from a river. So we're here, it's December, just a few days after Christmas. It's about 40 degrees out. The water to temperature is about an even 40. And we're catching carp from this medium sized river here. So we're gonna show you what we're doing and all the tricks and tips that we're using to catch fish. If you're trying to catch carp in a river in the wintertime, go downstream. The carp migrate downstream to the calmer, deeper water, and that's where you want to be. You want to be at the mouth of the river where it dumps into a bigger body of water. That's, that's where the magic's going to happen. You want to look for a deep, calm hole. And right here on this diagram, you can see kind of what you're looking at. This is the sweet spot where you're looking for. And in that spot, you're looking specifically for deep water. So in this piece of river on a bend, there's a deep hole and I'm gonna start fishing the bottom of the hole and then work my way up and start shallow and work my way deep. If you're gonna stay mobile and if you're going to hit all the good spots that are far from the parking lot, you gotta be able to transport your gear effectively. And uh, this, these rod bands were great for that. You take and you wrap the leads and the rods up, Velcro them together. A lot of different companies make these. And uh, there you go. All your rods are together in one unit. Makes it a lot easier to get where you're needing to go. I use a bungee cord to sling my landing net over my back and I can put my unhooking mat in there because it gets all nasty. On this trip, I'll be using a set of Delcom TXI Plus by alarms. They're really top of the line by alarms very durable, very reliable, work great, extremely sensitive. Um, they're really one of the few expensive items I have where I think they're worth the money. And those chains clipped to the line are called bobbins or hangers. And I'm using them because they help me detect drop back bites. So let me give you an example. This is a drop back bite. When the fish picks up the line and comes towards you, the line goes slack and the bobbin pulls it through the bite alarm, setting off the alarm. All right, this is my rod pod. It's the Signet Grand Sniper DL rod pod. Fabulous, one of the best rod pods money can buy. Carp fishermen use this all the time because it's so versatile. It works on muddy banks, it works on rocky banks like what we have here, it works on docks, concrete, developed manicured banks or wild brushy banks. You can put your rod tip straight up in the air or straight down into the water or anything in between. Very lightweight, aircraft grade aluminum. Has a nice old traveling case and fits my uh, three Delcoms very nicely. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what's been going on over here. Tommy, you okay? You're just sleeping a little bit. <laughs> Rolling around amongst all the syringes and broken beer bottles. Discarded underwear. All right. When you're carp fishing, especially on rocky, sharp ground like I am here, you need an unhooking mat to protect the fish. You don't want them to thrash around and injure themselves on the bank. So just having some sort of wet padded surface to put the fish on when you're unhooking it is really important. It can be something you made yourself. It doesn't have to be fancy. For bait, I'm using a Panko Jello sweet corn mix. It's a great pack bait that I'm going to be packing around a method lead. I'm going to have a little fake piece of corn as my hook bait. I'm going to spike it with this little Corda Goo, the maize flavor. But this stuff is really great and it's one of my favorite carp baits. I've got several videos where I use this, so check the video description for a link on how to make this bait. Oh yeah. Thank you. This is a mother. Oh. Ooh, look at that gash he's got there. Wow, something took a piece out of him. Look at that. Ooh. 
Yeah. Well, there we go, our first carp. Not too shabby. Nice little beauty. And uh, we're gonna get them back in the water here. Catch some more. Wanna go? Oh. There we go. Look at this. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, look at this. There's some controversy about what kind of carp this is. Some people call it an F1 carp, or and it's a hybrid between a common carp and a goldfish. But I believe this actually is um, a Pr Prussian carp. But I believe this is actually a Prussian carp. Man, here we gotta go. Got a triple. All right, this is uh, this is a triple here. It's a triple. Yeah, we've been fishing about 10, 15 minutes, and we just went bam, 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 three carp. Yeah, that little baby common carp, little tiny guy. Now you can tell the difference between the Prussian carp and the Crucian carp, and the common carp, because the common carp have barbels. See, he's got the little barbels in the corner of his mouth. Common carp are the only ones with barbels. I want the You want to hold them and get up and get over here? Yeah. Okay, here, put your arms right there. Okay, hold them. There you go, Tom. This is mine. This is for kids and carp. My head is all tangled up. Your head is all tangled up? Okay. <laughs> Man down. All right, there you go, you are so muddy. Here's the rig I'm using. It's a method lead with a helicopter sleeve, couple inches of leader, a hair rig, and a piece of fake plastic corn. Now I know a lot of you live in states where chumming is not allowed, so a method feeder like this is really awesome because in most states, this is not technically defined as chumming. Because the bait is attached to the hook, and connected to your line when you cast it out, it doesn't technically qualify as chumming in most states. So this is a great technique for catching fish in places where you're not allowed to chum. And fake corn is legal in states that ban corn. Reel them in, Tom. Hold on, wait a second, wait a second. He's going? Yep, he's on, yep. Oh yeah, well, keep your rod tip up, like this. Pull it, pull it up, like that. Just keep it up and, and reel. Go ahead and reel, and I'll help you out. Okay. Okay. Here, grab it like this, and like that. Does that help? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna go like this. He's gonna try to go under. We're gonna stop. Now reel in, reel fast. Grab, grab it with your fingers. Yeah, like that. Ow. Oh, sorry, sorry, buddy. Yes. No, I'm sorry. Come on here. You can do it. Okay, buddy. All right. Here, Tom. Get him. I'm going to net him. You're going to net him. Okay. He's so speedy. You're going to do it. You're going to. Oh, you're doing it. Now pick up the net. He's just friendly. Oh, he is friendly. Well, let's get the hook out of him since he's, he's friendly. He's nice. He's not nice. Oh, okay. He's no. nice. You want to kneel down and hold him? No, oh, another beautiful carp. Daddy. Oh. Daddy. 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 Got another one. You want to reel this one? Hump on his back?
He's, he's making noises. He just chirped at me. All right, shall we go put him back? Okay, so the reels I'm using are the Daiwa Regal 3500 BRI bite and run reels. They've got the fighting drag at the top. They've got the rod holder drag at the bottom. And they've got this clutch that switches between the two of them. This engages the fighting drag. This engages the uh, resting drag. Or you just roll the handle or turn the handle and it automatically engages the fighting drag. It's great because you don't have to readjust your drag every time you put the rod in the rod holders. Hey Tom, you want to come down here? Sorry, my leg is a little hurt right now. I may rest my leg a little bit the way my eggs. Hey Daddy? Hey yeah. Daddy? Yeah? I need to lay my eggs. You need to lay your eggs? Yeah, when they head out, they're going to be baby Tommy's. They're going to grow out to baby egglets. Right there, Daddy. And they're going to head out to and, and then those fishes. And they might head out. There we go. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Another beautiful carp. This is like number six or seven in about an hour. So fast and furious action. Beautiful time. It's the middle of December. We're having a ball. All right, let's get him back in the water. Well, it's been a lovely day. We just had a couple hours. We came in, bam, bam, hit it good. Caught some nice fish. And this is how you fish rivers in the wintertime. Just get in, get your fish, get out of there. It's, it's fast, it's fun. It can also be frustrating, but get out there and try it. You'll have a great time and uh, you'll keep the cabin fever at bay. <laughs> Good job. If you like this video, check out these other great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, including my favorite carp baits and how to catch carp, a great intro to catching carp. Thanks for watching. We put out new videos every week, so don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching.